guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. Today we are going to be rounding out my top three in every makeup category and we're gonna be talking about my top three eyeshadow palettes in every makeup category. This was a tag that was created by Angelica a couple of years ago and I believe I've done it the last two years. I was gonna save this video to post during my palette week during Vlogmas next month, but because I've already shared my top three in every face category and then eyes and lips, I figured we would just get all of my top three in every category out of the way in the month of November. So I have eight categories today. I did, oh shoot, there was one more category I wanted to add. I'm gonna go grab three more palettes, right? No. Uh, never mind. Okay, I have eight palettes or eight categories of palettes to share with you today. The only category that I decided to not include was large palettes just because I don't have a lot of large palettes. And then I added in a category for new to me this year palettes. So top three palettes new to me this year. But I will say those palettes that are my top three new to me this year might not be the highest ranking when I rank all of my palettes that came into my collection this year. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, um, if you guys are interested, stay tuned. First, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content, palette themed content, or just chit chatting about makeup, I'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on. And other than that, let's jump into the video. Okay, you guys. Let's jump right into it. We're going to start with neutral palettes. I will say I did try and like there are like for example, the Natasha Denona mini nude palette is one of my favorite neutral palettes, but this also fits into the category of small palettes. So I'm actually going to talk about this in my small palette category just so I could talk about 24 and I'm actually cheating and there was one category I literally couldn't narrow it down for my top four So I wanted to be able to talk about the most eyeshadow palettes possible But there are some palettes that definitely could overlap in categories, but we're gonna start with neutral and One of the first palettes that came to mind and this has been a favorite neutral palette for Basically the last three years I believe since I've owned this palette it is the artist couture supreme mauves sorry supreme nudes palette the mauves was a terrible palette um, This is what this palette looks like. I really love this palette because I have like my Basically five neutral shades that I love to have but then I also have this fun pop of like a mustard shade And then I have a green in here, which we love a green eyeshadow and then I have just I just overall I love every single shade in this palette. I feel like it is very, a very purposeful color story. This is a palette that comes traveling with me whenever I go traveling with me because it's just a tried and true. It's easy to blend, easy to work with, and I can get a look I know I'm gonna like no matter what. So that is number one. Number two, I fell back in love with this palette this year and thank goodness, cause it was very expensive. So it's a good thing that I'm getting use out of it, but it is the Natasha Denona Biba palette. Just such an incredible, palette if you are just looking for your basic more warm toned shades um i will say i am not someone who typically does like a gray or a black smoky eye so like i could have done without these three shades but i understand why they're in this eyeshadow palette um i think the mattes perform so beautifully in this palette i really like natasha denona's cream to powder eyeshadows um i just like the way that they perform on the eyes and like the way that they blend so i'm a huge fan of the shade Brian or rayon and tone and i just think this is a lovely palette definitely a tippity top favorite if i'm looking to reach for something just neutral that i know is going to work for me and then this could quite possibly be my newest favorite eyeshadow palette in my collection it is from glaminatrix and it is the nearly natural palette i absolutely love this palette i'm so thankful that i was able to get this palette i know it was in and out of stock and now i believe you can only buy this in like the singles bundle and i know that the singles bundle is frequently in and out of stock what i love about this palette and what i found with the glaminatrix formula is their mattes are definitely they're a little bit firmer pressed um, and they're not super pigmented right off the bat and they definitely take some building, but I actually like that because sometimes I find that because I'm impatient or just not the best blender, I feel like my, my hooded downturned eyes really just make it a struggle for me. Um, I like a shade that's buildable when it comes to a matte and then 
you have these very very intense very beautiful very punchy metallics if you like something more subtle on the eyes these metallics are not going to be what you are looking for but if you are someone who likes something sparkly and punchy i feel like this is just the creme de la creme of eyeshadow palettes so love that one now that we have the neutral palettes out of the way let's talk colorful this is new to my collection but Danessa Myrick's Lightwork Volume 5, 18 beautiful, colorful, multi-chrome shimmer shades. Some are multi-chrome, some are more of like a flaky textured, very metallic shade. There's a couple of more like lid toppers. There's just so many textures throughout this palette. Um, it may not look like a rainbow palette, but the prompt is colorful not necessarily rainbow and i am just so freaking in love with this eyeshadow palette i know i talk about the danessa myrick's lightwork palettes palettes all the time on my channel but i'm gonna repeat myself truly if you're looking for something unique and complementary to your eyeshadow palette collection maybe you're looking for special shades but you don't want to like go on to all the indie sites and order single shadows this has 18 very special shades in one eyeshadow palette for you so i truly cannot recommend this one enough this is a palette that i've talked about in all of my top three in every makeup category as my one of my favorite colorful palettes and i think i fell even more in love with the glam light ice cream dream palette this summer um it's just glam light has such a good formula both mattes and shimmers again they have extremely intense very punchy very metallic shades so if you like something more subtle, not going to be the formula for you necessarily, but they're mattes. For these shades, for these bright, colorful shades, they blend so easily. I don't struggle with these colorful shades at all, and that is saying something because, as I mentioned, I am not the best blender. So I'm a huge fan of this one. Um, it's a lot. This Speaking of I don't have larger palettes, I definitely could have talked about this as a favorite large palette as well. Um, definitely is a larger palette with 246 times 245, 30 shades, but such a good formula and truly adds something so special to my collection because I really do not have, I do not have these shades in other palettes in my collection. So I continue to love this one from Glam Light. And then I know you cannot get this one anymore, but I absolutely love this palette. I'm so excited to pull this out for the holidays again this year. This is the ColourPop Muppets palette. If they were to like randomly drop this again this year, I would say pick this up in a heartbeat. I absolutely love this palette. It is the tippity top best ColourPop formula. I love all of the shades. I've had no issues with anything. I will say the shade Icy Patch, this like pressed glitter is not my absolute favorite, but I still use it even. Um, I created so many looks that I have really enjoyed with this. The greens I love. I feel like the shade Festive is such a unique green to my collection. It's so beautiful. Um, I also really like this like Kermit the Frog green, this matte green. I created um, like a coral red look that i really really enjoyed with this palette and if i'm looking for something approachable but colorful like colorful but i can create something without having to think too hard i really like this palette because i can kind of just like follow the rows of shades and i think it's such a good one okay let's move on to monochromatic palettes i don't know like i'm like monochromatic palettes like i, I like i might be stretching it a little bit here but these are the palettes that i'm going with I know, I know, Patrick Ta is very controversial when it comes to his eyeshadow palettes right now because some people's palettes have, there's been found to be mold. I have had not had any issues like that with my palette um, and I really do love this palette. This is the Major Dimension one. This is my favorite um, warm matte brown looks. That's what you're going to get from this. I like the variety of textures and tones in the top row. I like the cream shadows. Very easy palette to work with, very easy to blend. There is some kick up with this one, but I do find that the shades blend really nicely. And it's just, if I'm looking for a warm brown look that I know is going to work for me, no questions asked. I mean, I hope I don't open this up to mold. <laughs> so I, I guess that wouldn't work for me. Um, but as of right now, that is a favorite warm brown monochromatic palette for me. This one is new to my collection this year. Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude. Um, I've said this before. I wish we could take out like this shade right here and potentially this shade up here and just truly commit to like cool tones and have not have these like peachy 
not have the peachy situation um but really beautiful palette one of those palettes from natasha that as i'm building my look i feel like i'm not going to be happy with it but then like 30 minutes after everything's really like sunk in and blended in i really have enjoyed every look that i've created really love the shade delilah muse mia and sheen i think really really beautiful um metallic shades i I'm like, I don't, I, I'm like, I never know whether to call it metallic, foil, because there are quite a few different textures and tones throughout this palette as well. I like that we have this like stickier, chunkier shade in here. Um, I do like a stickier, chunkier glitter metallic just because I feel like it adds such a pop, but this is a really, really beautiful one if you're looking for more of a cool toned nude. Yes, there are a couple warm toned shades spread throughout, but mostly I get cool toned looks with that. And then another one from Natasha. Wow. Am I in love with the Yucca palette from Natasha Nona? I don't know if you would consider this monotone, monochromatic, monochromatic, but I mean, you're pretty much going to get a green look with this, like a warm green look. I mean, yes, you have some yellows and you could skip on some of the greens or you could just do like the browns, but you get where I'm going with this. This is such an impressive palette from Natasha Denona. Um, I love everything about this. I've had no issues with any of the shades. I was a little bit worried about this, sh this like evergreen shade as well as this teal shade. Both of them blend so easily. And again, I struggle to blend color sometimes. I absolutely love every single one of the metallic sparkly shades. Um, the shade Plantasia is such a beautiful like gold green shade. I even love this like satin taupey purpley gray shade I think is so beautiful. Um, and I just this was such a hit from Natasha Denona this year. Okay, moving on to the small palette category. I already teased this one but Natasha Denona mini nude. I talk about this palette being like the sweatpants of makeup for me. Like it's just easy. I literally can turn my brain off and create a look and it's going to be exactly what I'm looking for. Yes, there's five shades. So you're pretty limited in looks you can create, but you can do just the shade in the crease for a matte look. You can do something um, definitely like lighter, but then you can also do something smokier. I love the shade Sienna right here. It's like this ready green one of those like ready green sort of metallics i think it's so beautiful um as many of you probably know this is a palette that had gotten so beat up that i went out and repurchased it because i loved it so much and then speaking of palettes that i went out and repurchased my daughter actually destroyed my rowan 1111 and i went out and repurchased this because i love this palette so much definitely not going to be for everybody but i will say i am not like a cream shadow type of a gal and i love this little quad um it's four cream shadows i i absolutely this is my favorite shade um it's this really beautiful frosty pink with like silver and blue reflex my hair is stuck and bothering me it's so pretty but all of these shades i just think are so beautiful and the texture just really adds something special to the eyes something almost a bit editorial a little bit messed up um not something like super it's not gonna be like this super beautiful like clean look so you really have to kind of know that going in otherwise i think you really won't like this like i said i don't think this palette will be for everyone but it is by far one of my favorite small palettes in my collection and then i've recently started reaching for this again as i'm trying to get through all of my unused palettes and i forgot how just how much i love this quad from pat mcgrath it's in the shade interstellar icon and i love this quad because i feel like each shade in this is actually pretty unique i love every shade in here the the one shade i'm like this is my least favorite shade but it's not a shade that i don't like i just am like eh. i definitely use the rest of the shades more than that definitely not a quad that i like go into just this and create a look but such a beautiful complimentary quad and also a favorite small palette in my collection next up we have affordable yes affordable is what i'm going to go with next um I am not someone who really likes drugstore eyeshadow. I just, eyeshadow I'm willing to splurge on because I feel like it just <laughs> is such a better experience. So it's always really tough for me in this category. I do have a video on top 10 palettes under $30. That was hard to come up with. Um, but up first, 
This one from Kaleidos, I believe you can still get. It is the Sashimi City. And the last I saw this, I think was 20 bucks. I think when I bought this full price, it was 24. You're getting seven shades. Yes, they are all warm tones, peachy pinks, but um, I absolutely love this palette. You guys know this is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. The two sparkly shades in here are so sparkly on the lids like no matter what you're going to get compliments on this palette or on your look if you use even one of those sparkly shades every time i've used this palette i've gotten compliments whether it be on the internet or in real life um this is just such a good palette I believe I've talked about this palette in every single top three in every category for this category. It's the ColourPop Lemoncello. I don't believe you can get this anymore, which is such a shame, but such a beautiful palette. I love this one so, so much. Again, you're getting that tippity top best quality ColourPop formula. The mattes are just so perfect. I love that you have this pop of yellow as well as the pop of blue. And then I really like all four of the metallic foiled shades in this palette. I love the shade Serenade for this like yellow, just like sunny shade and then i love the shade capri for a really beautiful green as well so still a favorite there and then from glam light i have the chocolate martini palette i can't remember this may have been 30 when it released but it has been on sale for a while i see it at usually the 15 dollars price point palette i actually really really liked i wasn't planning to purchase this and then i saw lauren may beauty review this on her channel and i was like oh gonna buy it and I have never been disappointed with the look that I've created with this palette. There are looks that stand out in my memory that I've created with this palette that I really loved. Um, I sh love the shade Extra Lit. It's this really beautiful, rosy, mauve sort of shade. Um, there actually is some depth to this palette. It looks really boring, I think, when you look at it. Um, like in pictures, even in videos, it looks quite boring. But when you see it in person, there is a lot of depth. There's no shades. Like the two most similar shades would be these two metallics right here. But this one is definitely more of a yellow gold, whereas this is more of a like gold gold or like a brown gold. Um, I'm just really happy with this one. I think if you like neutral brown palettes, you'll really enjoy this. So this would be my number three in this category. My camera battery is gonna die, of course, so I'm gonna swap that out. If I've moved a bit, you know why. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Indie next. <sighs> okay, I was so excited that Odin's Eye re-released the Merry Christmas and the Christmas Eve palette um, this year just because the Merry Christmas palette will forever be a favorite. I will say, as of right now, I have not ordered the two that came out this year. Pending the Black Friday sale, I might purchase them. But I also wasn't, like, wowed with the color story. And if I could end up saving a couple dollars on some eyeshadow palettes <laughs> by not buying them, that would be ideal. But then the other part of me is, like, I feel like I will end up regretting it because I feel like I collect odin's eye palace at this point and there's a couple that i missed out on that i do regret not owning so that's where i'm at um but the merry christmas palette is so beautiful um i just like how many metallic special shades you're getting here you're getting a bunch of different finishes you're getting duo chromes you're getting just so much in this little palette i feel like um the only shade that i'm like uh well two shades i don't really care to have a black in my eyeshadow palette and then i just am never gonna reach for a red like this but aside from that i have created some looks that i've really loved with this um i have a couple more in mind that i plan to create this season which i'm so excited about and if this is still available when this video is live and you have not picked this up i truly could not recommend this palette enough there are times where i find that there's a couple of shades throughout an Odin's Eye palette, specifically, usually they're mattes, that they just don't work the best. Um, I had no issues with any of the shades in this palette. So this is definitely a, not only a favorite indie palette, but also just a favorite palette in my collection. Um, I talked about this palette in my top 10 palettes of all time. <laughs> um, okay, these two, one of these is very new to my collection, but I could not not talk about this palette. It is from What's Up Beauty, and it is the Dragon Eye Palette. This, when they, okay, so they sent an email asking um, if I liked this palette, and when I saw the pictures of this, I'm pretty sure I even sent, like, a drooling emoji in my response, like, in my email response. This is pure perfection in terms of color story. 
I would not trade a single thing. I absolutely love this. The metallic shades in this, they are, there's multi-chrome, there's duochrome, there's just these like flaky metallics that just add so much texture and dimension to the eyes. Um, there's one look I have left in mind that I wanna create with this palette and I'm so excited to do that. I think I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow. Um, but I have created green looks, purple looks. I really just loved this palette so much. Um, the What's Up Beauty has such a good eyeshadow formula. Like they have such a good eyeshadow formula. So I couldn't not mention that. And then I also wanted to talk about the Adept Ninhadrin palette. Um, I just, this is a complimentary palette to, for me. It's not something I'm like going in to create just one look with just this palette, but I love how much dimension, how many different finishes. Again, you're getting duochromes, you're getting multi-chromes. Um, I just love all the colors in this palette. I feel like this adds something so special to my collection. Um, so I wanted to mention that. I really like the Adept formula as well. Okay, we have two categories left to finish it off. I'm gonna talk about high end slash luxury next. And this is the category where I literally could not narrow it down from my top four. So first up, we have the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. This is, at, so I ended up rolling this into my No Pan Left Behind project. No Pan Left Behind? Yeah, No Pan Left Behind project earlier this year and really got to know this palette. And this is just something so special to my collection, especially when I'm looking for a dusty pink, a mauve tone look. I, I always say this, but I love that Huda Beauty truly does have so many different finishes, textures, and tones throughout her palettes. Um, and this truly is no exception. I love every single metallic shade or foil shade, whatever you want to call it. Love them. This is such a beautiful ethereal sort of palette as well. I just truly cannot say enough good things about that palette. Natasha Denona Gold. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without this palette in my life. Um, first of all, in terms of like neutral slash warm brown mattes, this palette has all of my perfect shades and what I'm looking for. And then on top of that, this is literally the palette that made me fall in love with green eyeshadow because the greens in this palette were just so approachable. And I also really love this gold lid topper shade. I'm never disappointed with the look that I create with this palette. It's special to my collection in a sense of I just... I just love this palette so much. I Do I think that this is the most groundbreaking color story of all time? No, but I just truly from the bottom of my heart love this palette. I know you can't get this anymore, um, but Alter Ego does make a dupe to this palette. And I will say Alter Ego has an incredible eyeshadow formula. So if you are looking for that color story, I have not tried the Alter Ego Goddess palette. That's the palette. I haven't tried it, so I can't say for sure, but I have tried other palettes from them and their dupes are usually spot on and they have a great formula. So I'll leave that link down below. I also have a code with Alter Ego if you are looking to shop. The other two palettes in this category came into my life this year. Um, I do love my Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction, but I think Moonlit Seduction is my new favorite. And the reason I love Moonlit Seduction is for these five shades right here. This flaky, metallic, so sparkly blue-brown shade. This is the blue-brown shade of blue-brown shades, in my opinion. And it's almost not even like blue-brown. It's almost like it almost has a teal sort of shift to it as well. It is such a special shade to my collection. I absolutely love it. I love this like wintry silvery sort of shade for an inner corner highlight I think is so beautiful. You have this really beautiful metallic. It's just the texture is so thin that the way it lays on the eyes is just pure perfection. This is such a good palette. Never buy it full, full price but I bought this last year 40% off. Um I think on New Year's Eve. So if you can get 40% off, I highly recommend. And then you guys, I have a video coming in December, which I'm, I don't think I've ever been more excited for a video, but it's taken, it's taken literally the whole year to prep for this video. It's a hundred looks from a hundred different palettes. And I literally can't wait to do it again next year. But if I hadn't done that, I don't, if I wasn't like documenting 
all of my looks this year i don't know that i would have realized how much i love the abh cosmos palette and i almost did not buy this and that alarms me like i almost didn't own this but I, this is by far my favorite abh palette i think that's ever released i think i like this one more than abh jackie i said it i think so i created there's three looks i can think of that i've created with this palette that i was so so obsessed with there's one like darker like purpley blue sort of shade that i just loved so much and then i also created this like warm toned pink look with this palette i loved so much and then also i really love this green shade up here it's so good i love that palette Okay, and then I wanted to just end it with three palettes that I tried this year. Um, my top three palettes <laughs> that I tried this year, but now I'm like, but if I rank these, oh, it's so tough. Well, some of the other palettes that I tried this year, are, I also talked about. So these are just three palettes that I tried this year that I really loved. I don't necessarily know that they are my top three, but then it's like, why are you talking about them top three? Oh, it's so tough, you guys. It's so tough. Because I feel like it could change day to day. Like I'm looking at these and I'm like, I could see potentially like the Odin's Eye Trick or Treat and Little Ghost Palette possibly ranking above this. But I really wanted to talk about these three. So I'm just going with it. I'm going with it. Don't hold me to this when we get to the end of the year palette ranking. But the Lethal Cosmetics uh, Wildflower Palette. And again, if I was not documenting my looks, I don't know that I would have realized how much I really love this palette i will say i look into this sometimes and i'm like ugh, i don't necessarily know exactly what i want to do with this palette but i really really love the metallic foil shades in here i think they're so pretty i also absolutely adore this like periwinkle shade i think is so beautiful i find the mattes in this palette really easy to work with really easy to blend and i i'm really happy i finally picked up a lethal palette the day that i'm filming this video i know that there's a new lethal palette coming out i think there's like a butterfly on the cover but i haven't yet seen the inside i'm really intrigued to see what that is gonna look like and would potentially consider picking that up i'm not into like the lethal level up palette like i just cannot do the layout of those palettes and i've also considered building my own lethal palette i know that gets quite expensive though so there's some just further rambles about lethal um the Too faced italian spritz palette i ended up loving this so much more than i thought that i was going to and again a, a lot of it is through documenting those looks and as i've gone back i'm like oh i really liked some of the looks that i created with this palette i was blown away by the formula matte so easy to work with and then there's there's some of those like stickier textured metallics that are so punchy on the eye on this but then you have some real sheer like lid topper sort of metallic finishes as well so just a fun one too like a fun color story something a little bit different for Too Faced and I was a big fan of this one and then finally the third palette is this one from Glaminatrix I will say I have a couple of complaints about this palette but I wanted to talk about this one because I think Glaminatrix has such an incredible metallic special formula like literally I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like okay let me show you guys I'm nothing on my finger I'm literally just going to like tap my finger in there and i don't know how yeah i don't know how well you'll be able to literally it takes the slightest tap of your finger to get the most intense wash of color on your eyes it's oh the shades are so beautiful i will say it was a little bit and it could have just been the look that i was doing i need to do more with the shade basil i was really excited for this and this one wasn't exactly what i was looking for my complaint with this palette are the matte shades i just the color story I don't necessarily get like why do we have well first of all you have like the shade brulee here and then you have this like really pale yellow and then you have this like the color story doesn't necessarily make sense but maybe it's just me not being super creative um but i have to shout this palette out because truly the special shades in this palette are something so special and something so unlike a lot of the other special shades throughout my collection also like the packaging can we just like take a moment it's this really beautiful like brown faux leather it kind of reminds me of like 
a whiskey bar like i don't know it's giving me like whiskey bar vibes like i feel like i should be smoking a cigar when i do my eyeshadow with this definitely not but you know what i mean you probably don't know what i mean <laughs> has anyone ever smoked a cigar while doing their makeup that's something to think about as you're falling asleep at night. Anyway, you guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. My top three eyeshadow palettes in every category. I would love to know what are some of your favorite pad categories? Huh? What are some of your favorite palettes throughout <laughs> these categories? Can we slow it down stuff so we can actually speak in a way that makes sense um let a girl know in the comments below other than that thank you guys so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do i love you guys so much and i will catch you in my next video bye